Good day of yours, well, I've done a bit of a clean up recently and I found some more antique electronic fittings. I got another Baker like ring grip, light fitting, batten holder. I'll try to get the category number here. Made in Australia, obviously, ring grip. It's. Okay, it doesn't have a category number. That's definitely 1960s. And I think this could be a 60s or 70s bulb. Although it's a Chinese counterfeit or it's an original 60s style or 60s bulb. You can tell by how that filament's held in. It's a pretty old style. So that could be an original bulb with this fitting. So I'm going to keep that. That bulb still works too. So I'm going to keep that one. A fridge bulb. That's the same type of fitting. This is um, also Bakelite. The bulb I think could be blown. Yeah, it is to melted the connection off. Connection's melted. Try and get this thing undone. Got a lot of stuff to show you today. So this is a category or catalogue number, whatever it is, H eight seven five point five amp T fifty volt. Small little baton holder for these little bulbs. That's an original bulb too from the 70s, so very old style had a filament saw held together. But unfortunately it's blown. You see the imperfection in the bulb. But that lasted a long time. So I was gonna use this to drive a flyback transformer, this CFL ballast uh, inverter. I got a HPM baton holder on it. It's not broken so I could use it for another one, fix another light. But this damn capacitor failed. So I might just replace that and try again. I think the inner two, you got to connect the flyback chat on with an inner two, and this will drop, drive a flyback. So I should try that one day. And I got an IEC with an inbuilt switch and two surge capacitors. That could be used for a project somewhere along the line. So that'd be good, good to have. Stuff like computer power supply. One of those little float switches, water level switches. Yeah, pretty useful stuff. Light switch from a fridge. That's a adapter for the fridge, it bolts on the back wall. You've seen this power point in a previous video. Double pole HPM. A clipsal number 4DD series. Made in Australia, AC only obviously. This and here is a HPM um, category number 896 AC only patent registered design no series number on it but yeah it's designed a bolt like that onto your wall and you switch it that way so that's a good one to keep we've got this 1960 or early 1960s era light or um, one of those architrave switches goes on your door frame light switch so I like this type. That's a yeah, 1960 or 1962, probably that early 60s. Category 550 HPM, 10 amp light switch, four way. You can twist this little thing out and pull it out and either mount it that way or that way. So that's a good one. And a clips or fan controller, which still works. I can hook up a fan motor to it or something like that, or a light, use it as a light dimmer. And I got this really old, I think it's a kettle cord. The kitchen appliances used to use it. It doesn't tell you the brand though. It's just 250 volt, 1 amp on the plug. 250 volt, 3.5 amp on the connector. So I don't know what brand that is, but pretty old. I only got an old 1970 capacitor from a fluoro lot, which someone we had the light before us, because we bought some fluoride lights for our shed second end. And whoever wired this up previously, just stuffed it up. It must have hooked it up the wrong way and, yeah, just leaked and vented. As you can see, it's all handmade, soldered together by hand. It's 250 volt. It's something 1961, but it says 1970 on the bottom, so... 
time I can make up the, the name. Something Manufacturing Proprietary Limited. But yeah, it's British made. I got a HPM um, plug socket grip nut or the shroud for your HPM modern, the modern shape HPM plug top with a old Clipsal 438 series cord grip nut. So, and I got another old cord HPM series number 106 side plug top. And you can also change it, pull this out, and the cord can come out the bottom as well. So. Either have it that way or come out the bottom. But yeah, it's a just a normal 10 amp standard one with a motor, four way um, electric motor wire I put on it. And I got this old air conditioner, Swampy. Just a main switch out of an old evaporative air conditioner but I just found it at the scrapyard. On, off. Just an outdoor weather switch. EGA, the brand. Got this old American. T-O-R-I-I brand, Tory brand, plug top. It's a Baker light, 15 amp, 125 volt. So yeah, one of those reliable ones, but yeah. American type. So yeah. i got some other few goodies. Old decal. Um, no, I think it's a 19, uh, HG 1973, I think it might have been. Model. HG Kingswood decals. Those two are the only ones that survive. The rest are all broken. This is off the boot. Triomatic. It was a 186 Triomatic Kingswood. And this is a badge S186. Right, gotta, definitely going to keep these ones. <laughs> Triomatic. I'll get them to stay if I can. 186 Triomatic. That's, that's how it went. Yeah, that was a good car. I got a spare battery terminal post clamp. I need that. That's got a blown filament at the top. I'm going to try and overvolt this on the variac, so that might be interesting to pop. And one of these old reversing horns. I'll show you a little bit about them later. Commodore horn. Come off a scrapped Commodore. The six volt motorbike horn, which I pulled apart to fix. Another back horn, I'll show you what the modern equivalent looks like that replaced them. Why well, you don't put that CDs anymore, so yeah. I'm trying to dig out the little modern one I got. It's just just a light bulb with a buzzer on the back. It just connects straight to your brake light. But I'll show you what that now looks like if I can find it. I'll compare it with this one. I'll show you the difference. Okay, of yours, well that's the modern equivalent. Beeping reverse light or reversing signal. That replaced one of these. There was another type where it used a little 5 watt speaker. Look, kind of like one of these little radio speakers. Except it was made of like a canvas weatherproof material. And there was a little circuit behind that that made it beep. But these ones here are definitely the best. I'll try and power it up here on this old century battery which finally started to die. I got good use out of it, they say. Paid off, um, ground. That's just the uh, acoustic part of it. Ground there, on the top. Pretty hard, very hard to get a good ground on this. Uh, I can't get it to work, I'll try and do it here. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Here's the one I pulled apart which didn't work. I found out why, I got moisture in it. But that's the actual... All that is there is just a disc horn. Just miniaturised and older type, these older, very older type ones were bigger physically and it's made by Niles it's called a backhorn by Niles 12 volt that's the bit that or the other beep of the bit that contacts and switches on and off to make a beep this one actually got um, burnt out but there's a little resistance wire that it heats up in this biometallic strip 
contacts and breaks contact and there's a little contact here. It twists it downwards. I'll try and do this by hand if I can. So but basically what it does is a little wire there heat, uh, heats up. This will just pull back as it cools down, contacts and goes like that again. So yeah, it's only controlled by this little bit of wire which heats up and warps this bit of metal. And that's, that's this getting hot and cooling down and flexing and going back in the shape which contacts and makes this thing beep. It makes that car horn beep ground out a bit of resistor. So yeah, that just bolts underneath the back of a posty van. There's a off, um, yeah, that red van out there. There's it underneath the back, and this goes to your brake light, and that's your back reversing signal lamp. So yeah, and that's the modern day ones, which they all sound the same nowadays. Let's see if I can get this needle power up, but I don't know. I need a bit of um, get a big long bit of wire. There. Yeah, sounds much different. That's the modern equivalent of a place lamp. And they've got some more decals, Daihatsu, Handy Van. That's that white, little white thing I got. Now called a Handy, which is now called a Daihatsu Myra. So, good old piece of defunct. Um, decal there. That horn still works. That horn still works. And they've got a nice old vintage vacuum gauge. I think it's a fuel, yeah, vacuum petrol pump tester. Vacuum gauge for your testing petrol pumps. So the little spring that retracts a needle and zeroes it off is gone. It's falling apart. And, yeah, that's why it's all doesn't work properly anymore, the needle's just free float, uh, free, it moves freely. But yeah, it's very, very old. It's probably from the, at least from the, be from the 50s. Hose goes in there to your fuel pump on your car and you can test it. But it isn't accurate because the spring is missing. But it tells you set throttle slightly above normal idling speed. Connect gauge to intake manifold. And there's little things here at different numbers. Drop to zero shows check the exhaust outlet. Drop at regular intervals. Valves holding open or warped or burnt. Unsteady hand indicates sticky valve or plug miss or tappets or carburetor and need checking. Low vacuum indicates dirty engine or leaking at joints or late ignition timing. And we've got another one here at this region here. Steady running between 17 and 21, normal engine, properly tuned, so 16, 17, 18, 9, and 20. So, in this area here, if the needle's fluctuating or steady between here, the engine's fine. Here we've got wide fluctuations. At first speed, indicates weak valve springs. And we've got this one, smaller fluctuations. Approximately 14 to 19, maybe due to worn valve guides. So it's a pretty useful little um, gauge. Just needs a spring to retain a needle so it works properly and that's it. I'll probably pull it apart to show you how it all works. Very nice old gauge. Got this from school when I was doing automotive. They were going to throw it in the bin so I said no, I'll have it. So that was good. Very old. So yeah. That's why the screen's probably cracked because it was from a school, some of the students had a drop it or something. I'll try and get that part here, if I can. Very hard to get these apart without damaging them too much, these old gauges.
Yeah, you can see it's been cracked. Glass just falling apart. Two screws at the back here undo. I'll do that to show you what the mechanism looks like. out and that's the inside there's a little spring on the back here which winds around this shaft here so I can't get a good angle here for a second oh, let's try there you go there's a little shaft there and there's a little spring that retains this and it's supposed to hold this at zero but as you can see it doesn't it just moves around freely it's supposed to retain it right there at zero I can get a good hand on it there, so the spring is supposed to be calibrated so it yeah, holds it there flat at zero and it'll gauge will work fine but yeah because of that spring's missing that's why it was thrown out it actually fell apart that spring it all come apart nothing it's a pretty basic little thing machine looks like it's handmade this one the brass solid flat copper um, capillary expands and shrinks moves that little needle in there on the gear Very nicely made. There's a nice old style needle. Yeah. It's supposed to go one way or another. So the vacuum is here or something, full pressure. But yeah. Very handy little gauge. If I ever get that spring or somehow restored or something, yeah, it'll probably work again. And I've also got a few other things. 1970s sunbeam hair dryer. Put this aside for a second. Put this back together later on. Yeah, it's all heavy duty metal. That. I'm gonna put the glass in this. And chip the glass, a bit of glass there. But yeah, I'll look at this later on too. That's a nice little mechanical counter. I'll show you the insides of that later on. Anyway, there's a Sunbeam Style Plus 800 made in Japan. It's a 1988 model, I believe. So it's as old as me. 22 years old. Which, uh, yeah, it looks to be 70s style how yeah, it's made, but all Japanese made. Hitachi cord, Hitachi plug. Open it up to see how, to show you just how well built this thing is. It's all Japanese made. All Japanese parts. Got a micro switch. Dry, off style. Micro switch is there. A very good quality DC motor. External brushes on it and everything. There's a little rectifier which taps off these wires which go off this little tap in the 12 volts tapped off this heating element which is a dryer itself a hot air and this must be some sort of fuse yeah some sort of temperature fuse cuts it out there's a little leaf thing there switch there's a little thick thick grade or high grade aluminium fan blade Rubber grommets bearings. This is this thing still works. So yeah, very very um, good build quality. <laughs> Japanese made all over. The cord itself is Hitachi, so it's Hitachi cord with a Hitachi plug. So yeah, I look into a modern day hair dryer. There's nothing. Um, yeah, it's just crap. This thing is just very, very, very well built. This thing's definitely built to last. That's a... I've never seen a motor quite like that. It's got four length of brushes left. Just hope they're not those tiny piddly ones. They're just very beefy. You can change them, they're replaceable. The commutator's good. It's a very high quality little motor. So. I'm going to keep that one. 
very high build quality. It's one of those old hair dryers. We've got the accessories for it in there. And here, this mechanical counter. It's a bit stiff. open it up and show you what the insides look like. Okay, the oars are just going to open anyway. Let's see how this thing actually works. They get better lighting in here. Yeah, you see the little Geneva wheels behind there. It's that alarm here that pushes on a gear like that and turns that wheel. Try and show this thing moving from the back if I can. Yeah, you can see how it all works. If I put all these, there you go, just reset itself. I'll start again. No, 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 let's start this one Should be able to see this little thing reset, fucking, there you go. They turned and they all reset to zero, so it's pretty. Gotta love these old mechanical counters. Anyway, yeah, that concludes my collection of random fittings. Random stuff for projects, car horns, and good old things with decals. So, yeah, I'll probably try and find more of these if I can. There's light switches. I'm pretty sure I've got about four or five of them, but this is the only one I found. That's just a baker light switch. I'll try and pull it apart for you. I'll show you how it pulls apart. Basically, what you do, you gotta turn it, and it pulls out. And that's the switch itself there. And you can swap it around in whatever position you want to mount it. It locks in, and that's it. Yeah, you gotta even center it properly. That's like a. Yeah, I'd say that's probably melamine actually. Not plastic. It's, it's got that ceramic effect to it. You got little arrows here with a HP logo, which you can turn this whichever way you want it. Fit it in. Turn that way. That's it. Pretty little, simple little design. So yeah, that concludes my collection of random antiques and random old stuff and useful kind of stuff. And something to have a bit of fun with. And this will probably over, over vault with a vow, yeah, so I'll put that aside. So yeah, thanks for watching.